What's up? This is Jake with Hike734 coming to you from my office today to talk to you about walk-in backcountry permits of Glacier National Park. And the first thing I want to tell you is that walk-in backcountry permits are just you showing up to Glacier without a permit for backpacking in Glacier National Park and you want to get one. I mean, that's that's really the bottom line. Um, there, there's advanced reservation permits, which you apply for beforehand, and those have like a $30 advanced reservation fee and all that kind of stuff. But this one right here is primarily just for, um, you're walking up and you're saying, hey, I don't have a trip, but I want to go ahead and spend the night in Glacier's backcountry. Um, this blog will also apply to those that have a backcountry an advanced reservation permit, but want to change maybe one of their nights because they don't like one of their campsites and they're hoping to get something else. Um, or for people who have an advanced reservation permit who decide later on, um, or it gets closed because of bears or something like that. So, but the primary audience here would definitely be those that don't, you know, maybe you got denied for your advanced reservation. You, re you realize at the last minute that Glacier actually has a, um, a walk-in availability and you have to reserve campsites or something like that. So anyways, here we go. The first thing is where to actually pick up your permit, whether it's advanced or a walk-in. Um, and that is um, Apgar, um, which is, you know, in, the, in West Glacier. Pole Bridge, which is in the North Fork. Um, you can also pick it up at the St. Mary Visitor Center or the ranger stations in Many Glacier or in Two Medicine or actually up in Waterton, which is in Waterton National Parks, but they have a, their visitor reception center up there. So you can go in and pick up a permit there. And in most of those places, um, I believe, open at 7 a.m. So you're gonna want to um, make sure that you are there before 7 a.m. to pick up your, your permit. And um, the, the, the big thing, and this is the really tricky part about this, and, and for some reason I sometimes struggle to communicate how this is, but when you go in, it doesn't matter what time of day, you can pick up a backcountry permit for that night or the following night. And, and that's really important because if you are trying to get a really highly coveted spot and you show up before 7 a.m. and you wanna get one for that night and you realize that that permit is gone, it's possible that somebody came in the day before and started their trip for that site. So I hope that's not too confusing. It's basically, if you show up on Tuesday, you can get a, a, a walk-in reservation for a trip starting that night or the following night. So if you're coming in and you actually have a couple of days that to fudge around, you might want to show up, say you fly in on Monday, um, or you, 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 you fly in on Sunday, but Monday you want to get your first night. You come in at 7 a.m., you might want to just say, hey, I want to get it for tonight. Oh, it's not available. Well, what about, what about Tuesday night? And start your permit there. So that's one of the big keys is a permit can be obtained up to 48 hours in advance. Um, and then, like I said, you want to be there before 7 a.m. Um, another thing is you need to know what's available. And the, the way to check that is they actually have um, a, wet, a, a page that has the uh, walk-in availability. Now, remember that even though you might be wanting to get a site for tonight, somebody who started their walk-in availability trip, you know, like four days ago, it's going to take up all those walk-in availability spots, right? So, so you want to check in advance to see what's actually available, and they'll do it about five days in advance. So, um, go check out that page. It'll make a lot more sense once you actually get there. But, um, but I'm going to go ahead and have the link here below so you can check it out. And obviously, in the blog, I've got links to all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so you definitely need to know what's available so, so when you walk into the backcountry office, there, you, you know, you're more prepared. And, and you really, when you walk into the backcountry office, it's really good to know what's available so you can say, okay, this is the plan. Is it still available this morning? You know, because what happens is at 7 a.m., all these different sites, these six sites or seven sites, um, there's people coming in and, and booking those. So there's definitely, um, it's to your advantage to know what the heck you want to do. Um, otherwise, if you're fumbling around, you know, sites are starting to get picked up. So there is a little bit of a hurry um, in that. So. Um, the other thing is is have alternatives because you might go in there and they're like, oh, well, there was only one more site left for you know Old Man Lake and that's already gone. What what else? And so alternatives would include doing things backwards um, and just in different and completely different sections. So going into it educated is definitely helpful. But I can tell you that almost all of my permits that I've ever gotten have been walk-in availability. And it's, um, you can also, one of the things that I found like for the Northern Loop, I found ways to do the Northern Loop in the middle of summer 
um, or the Northern Circle in the middle of summer by maybe starting in Waterton. So if, you, if you're willing to be flexible and be a little bit creative, you can actually do some of these really great iconic trips of Glacier um, by, by, by knowing a little bit more about maybe starting a different spot, doing it in reverse, or something like that. So. Um, the, the, the couple of things resource wise, um, I strongly encourage you to check out, I have another backcountry permit application blog, which includes a little bit more information that I'm talking about here. Definitely check that out. Definitely check out Glacier's backcountry page. The whole page, including their backcountry guide, um, their page will include things like reservation, uh, availability, walk-in availability. You know, you're going to need to watch the videos. If you don't want to watch the videos when you show up, you can actually watch them online. They have them available for YouTube. And um, and one one other thing, just to, that, that I was just thinking about that. Um, there, a site, a campsite, say if it has four different campsites available in a given um, location, about half of those are res reserved for advanced, and then the other half are made for walk-in availability. So, um, so that's kind of what that walk-in availability is. That that is significant um, in that it's showing you which ones that they normally reserve for that. So, anyways, said all that to say this: make sure you know what you're doing. Um, show up 48 hours in advance. Um, check the check the availability. Have alternatives, um, but but come anyway. I think that you're going to find that you might not get the exact like I've said this before in other blogs, but you might not get the the ideal trip that you think. But there's so many great places in Glacier that you just might find a new favorite place um, by just getting out there and going. So, anyways, I hope this helps. This is this is to answer a lot of those questions that I get from people who have been denied the advanced lottery and that kind of stuff. And so I hope this kind of gets you you going. So if you're watching this just on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you come back to the blog because I'll have links to all this kind of stuff that'll that'll be really helpful. So anyways, I'm Jake with Hike 734. Hope you enjoyed the walk-in permits for um, Glacier National Park and you get out there and just hit the trail and have a good time.